everybody. Thanks for joining me for another One Man Review. Today I'll be taking a look at Matt Eamon's new book, The Council of Frogs from Second at Best Press. Uh, this is going to be a pretty short review, I think, because the the story, I don't want to give away too much of it. Uh, but it's, it's a really fun book. It's a really cute book. Well produced, beautiful to look at. Uh, you can see on the cover there's this nice little foil tip in. It has a really nice smell of like paper and ink to it. That's I don't know why some books don't have that, but this one really does. And it's just a fun fantasy story with a pretty interesting theme. The theme is I would say kind of crops up very quick in the end. It's not like an uh, it's not a through line throughout the whole book, but it does kind of tie off with like a you know something to actually think about at the end, which is nice. But there's not too much heaviness in it. It's really just like a fun fantasy book. So just a brief explanation of it and a little bit about the theme without trying to give away too many spoilers. There is a battle mage, battle wizard who dies and falls into a swamp. And basically his life force goes and creates all of these little frogs. And then his zombie kind of alive, kind of dead corpse is there like keeping the frogs protected. They're like his his offspring and they're his family. They have these little bales that only make noise when they're around magic. And uh, but that's basically the main characters here is this frog where he's been entrusted with a message and he's got to go find a warlock that's going to come and help the frog. So it's it's just a fantasy quest book. But you can see the art's just adorable, uh, really fun to look at. The little frogs are super cute. There's a lot of just really fun fantasy scenes. You can see here, there's this reminds me, it's it's hard not to compare this to Linnea Sturt's A Frog in Winter as well, because that frog protagonist and the cutesy art with all of the fun flowers that focus on uh, the, the flora in the world, all those kinds of things. And, you know, there's there's a variety of stuff. There's also where you get into, like, more civilized areas. So Matt Eamons is just really showing off a ton of different skills. Uh, the, the other main character, I would say, is this monkey character here. This, like, ape-like character that becomes friends with the frog and is trying to help him on his quest. And, again, just really cool character designs. They all kind of, even though it goes from, like, cutesy to more, like, cute monstery. Uh, it all sits well in the same world together. My only only complaint I would have about the book is that because it's printed on matte paper, which I really like, I really prefer that, uh, just some of the coloring gets a little muddy and too dark. Like if it would have been printed on glossy paper like this, you would have seen that there's some, some barely different colors there because the boot would have been black. So I think that's just something I don't, I haven't read all of Matt's work. But it seems like something that once you see that imprint and you realize like what what that type of paper is doing to your colors, then you would just adjust and try and color a little bit lighter, knowing how that's going to come out in print. Um, but that that's not a problem at all. One thing I really do like, and it was pretty obvious to me while I was reading the book and then confirmed in the back, which I'll show you, is that this is all pencil. There's no ink in here. It's just adjusted pencil. So it created kind of a softness to everything, which I, I really, really enjoyed. Uh, this character here is the, the warlock character that they're looking for. And this is where, like, it takes getting this far in the book to get to the theme. But you do get a, a kind of compelling theme in here as well, which is they're going to ask this warlock for help. And this warlock's out on a mission uh, to basically help the a human settlement and try and keep keep the bad in check. He's saying there's a delicate balance I must keep in check. Your frogs do not outweigh my responsibilities. So it's kind of a peek into the utilitarian philosophy. Like there's a in philosophy there's an ethical theory called utilitarianism where you're just basically trying to create the greatest good and if if you have to sacrifice some things for the greater good, it's very mathematical and you're just trying to aim for the sum total great good. And that that always the problem with that is it always leaves out, you know, like like you, you'd be willing to like murder a baby in front of its mother if it saved a thousand people. So there's still an ethical grossness built into it. And this character is definitely representing that side of things and asking the reader to think about, you know, if that's okay or if we need to figure out a way to take care of everybody. And you can see that's happening towards the end of the book. So it's not a very 
uh, deep dive into that idea, but there there is a little bit of struggle with that idea at the end of the book, which is interesting. And then here you can see what the pencils look like. Matt Eamon's printed a couple of the pencils. You can see like this is a penciled piece and then how it shows up colored. Um, and yeah, it does create like a kind of softness that really fits the quality of the, the cuteness of it all. And I really, really enjoyed that. I noticed it and enjoyed it in the book. I thought it was a good choice. But yeah, really well printed, beautiful book um, and fun, cute story. I think you could pretty much hand this to anyone, adult or child, and they would be able to enjoy it. And like I said, even though most of it's just a fun action adventure, there is kind of some extra little hook at the end that will leave you thinking. And I really appreciate that. So definitely recommend this. And I, I definitely need to check out Matt Emmons' other work because I haven't read The Gardener and a couple of his other books. So now, now I'm much, much more interested. I had only known him from the stories in Dagger Dagger, and those ones I remember enjoying, but I wanted to see more. And this this more that I've got now in the Council of Frogs definitely has me sold on Matt Emmons as a creator that I, I want to check out. And also, what the hell's going on in Philadelphia? Because uh, pretty much, I feel like almost every small press thing I buy now that is great is coming from an artist in Philadelphia almost. So I don't know what y'all are drinking over there, but uh, I want some of that. Music